Hello, everybody. Let me start with a question. How many of you have an Android device? Cool. And how many of you have at least one Android device at home? Less hands. Interesting. In the next 20 or so minutes, I will be talking about a new Android banking Trojan called Cerberus. I divided my talk into three main parts. Firstly, I would like to start with a story with a background of Cerberus. Then we move to code analysis. And finally, I would like to share some insight about the actual campaign we have identified in the wild in, in ESET. So if it is OK with you, let me start. In June this year, I have found on one underground Russian forum a new post promoting new, allegedly new banking Trojan for, for Android called Cerberus. They claimed, they claimed it's a new, it's a sophisticated, a lot of features, it's not detected by any AV company. They can create custom payloads for each client, written from the scratch, and they have been working on this malware for two years, and now they're coming public which was um, really weird. Also, they don't sell the source code, only rent it as a, as a service. And it's not cheap. When we compare price of servers with uh, one of the most recently popular Android banking malware family called Anubis. Anubis is for free since it was leaked and it's open source. It's open source now uh, and the code is available on dozens of underground forums. And as I have seen in the past, Many times, bad guys, scammers, will take the leaked or open source code, they rebrand it, and then they try to scam other scammers on such forums, claiming it's a new, sophisticated, you should buy it from us. Actually, the same thing happened a couple days ago, where there is a new version of Anomis. And I thought, this is the same case scenario, because there was no proof. Cerberus is just another Anomis. So I went on Twitter, and I asked InfoSec community, have you heard about the servers? Do we have any hash, any sample, any CNC? Something that would help us identify if this malware is new or not. Unfortunately, no one heard about that. But because of this tweet, actually developers or PR team of servers reached me. And by the way, for me, it's the first time I've seen promoting malware, or Android malware, outside of an um, underground forum. Guys actually have a Twitter profile and they're promoting it. So let's come back here. Because of this tweet, they actually reached me and they were, they were like, OK, Lucas, if you want a sample of our malware, there is a way how you can get it. Simply buy it. Well, I'm not going to buy your malware. <laughs> They even created me or posted a screenshot how my admin panel would look like if I would purchase. So here's an example how the admin panel looks for first servers. I took advantage of that and I started to communicate with them to get as many information as possible, what it is, how it works, and maybe where the guys are from. Because at that time, we had no information about the servers. I found out, hard to tell if it's true or not, that the guys, developers, are from Ukraine. And they even offer me a job. Lucas, come to Ukraine, and you can help us build this malware. They pay well. They offer me around 5,000 euros. But I'm not going to Ukraine to, to build a malware. I don't trust the scammers, of course. <clears throat> well, then I just simply asked if it is possible to share a sample with me. They actually did. They shared a sample with me. However, the sample was corrupted. It was not working because they exchanged the CNC channel that points to the payload for my Twitter handle. But two days after they shared a sample, we in ESET identified the actual campaign with a fully working servers. About the campaign, I will be talking about in the last part of my talk. Now let's move to code analysis of this, of this campaign. The workflow of servers is kind of typical for Android banking Trojan. There is a dropper that contains envelope that contains the um, encrypted code. Once launched, it would decrypt the first stage payload, launch it, 
then the first stage payload would to com starts to communicate with CNC and downloads the custom-made uh, module. That's kind of typical for all Android banking intelligence. Let's call it that way. <clears throat> what happens from the user perspective once user launches such infiltration on, on device? Firstly, there are three checks. The first one is if it is running in a CIS countries, Commonwealth of Independence, it would simply quit. It would not continue. So if the infected device is one, from one of these countries, malware stops. The second check is if it is running, if it is running in uh, emulation or not. And the last one is a check for a, a motion sensor. It means if the device actually makes steps, it belongs to actual user because we carry our smartphone in a pocket and bags, whatever, and it, we trigger the motion sensor. For malware researcher guys like me or maybe many of you, your testing device just um, sits on the table all day long. Once these three checks are fulfilled, malware then requests from a user to activate accessibility services on behalf of, in this case, Flash Player. For a user, it's um, almost impossible to tell if this request is really from Flash Player or not because it could be impersonating an um, Android system, um, your browser, your uh, Google Play Store, whatever. It's hard to tell for a user. Um, quickly, what are accessibility services? They are on every Android device. They help visually impaired users, disabled users to read text, see what's going on, uh, read a notification, which application is running, and many, many others. And this is misused by servers where it can perform clicks on behalf of the user. It can hijack clicks to activate, to allow um, necessary permissions, like uh, send text messages, receive text messages, make phone calls. Then it can identify which application is running. Is it banking app or not? And also key lock user input. To expand its reach, Cerberus used or uses 33 different languages so based on the default language of your smartphone, it would pick the, the language and request the, uh, to activate accessibility services to look more trustworthy, like it's coming from system. Once the accessibility services are activated, malware actually takes control over the infected device and then downloads the custom-made module. Custom-made module is a DEX file that is stored in a private directory uh, containing the, the malicious functionality. Then it would download injections for targeted applications. Difference between a Cerberus and um, let's say Anubis, one of the most popular these days, or Bangbot, Anubis downloads all the injections and runs them locally, where uh, Anubis actually displays them from, uh, from CNC. The benefit of that for Cerberus is that it works faster uh, and also works much better if you have slow, laggy internet. Servers can target um, uh, financial banking applications, cryptocurrency wallet exchanges, um, social media apps, email clients, and, and do uh, dozens of others. Um, these, these days, servers can target 90 banking apps from uh, these countries. Besides banking apps, it also targets or can request, or the goal of that is to request um, uh, credentials for particular banking applications. Cerberus can also lure victim credit card details on behalf of um, social media applications. It means once, you, once your device is infected, you launch one of these apps. First, there is a request. Looks like it's coming from uh, the particular app. So let's say you open the Telegram. First, there is a request. Insert your credit card details. Because we in Telegram need that, it's a new policy and also um, lures uh, credentials for email clients. That's the core functionality of any Android banking Trojan, including the, the servers. Uh, quickly, how it works, user launches, let's say, one of the targeted apps I just mentioned, like the Gmail. Once user launches the Gmail, malware identifies that Gmail was launched by misusing accessibility services, displays the injection, and the injection overlays legitimate application requesting credentials. Servers can also bypass um, SMS two-factor authentication and the one-time codes. As I said, this is the core functionality. Besides that, 
Cerberus can uh, trigger um, 13 different commands on infected device. The most interesting ones are uh, send receive text messages, make phone calls, forward phone calls, lock device, uh, key lock user input. Now I go through a couple of features or functionalities Cerberus has. Like um, locking the device. This is not a ransomware feature in Banking Trojan. This feature is launched by the attacker. Um, it's kind of caching out zone. It means where when, if, the, if the attacker already obtained credentials for your banking app, can intercept one-time codes coming in a text message. You can remotely lock the device, victim's device, by muting down all the notifications like received text messages or phone calls coming from your bank about um, weird transactions. And then it will lock the device every 10 milliseconds. For user, for victim, it's impossible to get back to your smartphone. On the other side, the attacker is making transactions. To stay on infected device as long as possible, Cerberus uses uh, persistence techniques, again, by misusing accessibility services. Right after start, it would activate to itself um, device administrator rights. It means for, for the user, for the victim, that there are a couple extra steps he needs to go through to uninstall the, the infiltration. Disables Google Play Protect. Disables manual uninstallation. It means when a user wants to go to settings, apps, or app manager, and manually search for, let's say, the Flash Player, it's impossible because such activity is killed and controlled by the servers. Blocks launch of um, uh, security apps. Uh, at the first version I've analyzed, there was a default a Xiaomi UI security solution. That was, it, wasn't, it wasn't possible to, to launch it if Cerberus was already installed. Even though there is a persistence on, on infected device by, used by Cerberus, Cerberus can also self-destruct itself by receiving command to remove device administrator and uninstall, uninstall itself. Uh, in the first uh, sample I analyzed, there actually wasn't a code for uninstalling it itself, but there is no problem to, to implement that. Now the question is uh, how to remove that. Is it possible? Yes, yes it is. There are actually two ways how to remove servers from infected device or any other Android banking Trojan. The easiest one is through safe mode. You go through safe mode of your smartphone, go to settings, apps, search for the app, remove that. Why? Because in safe mode, um, third-party apps installed by the user are not launched, are not triggered. And because of that, persistence cannot be applied. The second one is through Android debug bridge commands, where you connect your smartphone to your PC, and from your PC, you then send ADB commands to identify which application is running, to uh, force stop the application and uninstall it. So these are two, two ways. Now let's go through a couple of highlights of Cerberus. It uses Tor as a CNC. Not many recent banking Trojans on Android platform does that. They also offer APK Builder. It means that potential client don't need to know how to develop, how to create, how to compile Android apps. Simply put it all together using drag and drop, and you have your output, just, just spread it out. The same applies to injections. You, can, you don't need to know how HTML or JavaScript works. You simply drag and drop, create custom injection, and make it, make it work in your APK. Also, in September, they shared uh, they have, as I said, 90 uh, targeted banking apps with this particular in injections. If you want more injections, you have to pay extra. <clears throat> they have good support. They are willing to create uh, new features for their customers, new injections, and they are looking for, for affiliates. They have social media, as I mentioned, the Twitter, and recently I found out they also have a Telegram bot. So it looks like these guys are not afraid of getting caught. And uh, here's an example of the actual CNC for, for the servers. That's it for code analysis of, of servers. Now let's move to actual campaign we, we identified in ESET. It's one of the first, first campaign of, of servers being used in the wild. Um, 
survey was published in the end of the June, and in July we identified the campaign. The campaign was spread by malicious link um, that claimed there is some media content, but if you want to watch the content, first you need to download and install Adobe Flash Player. Once installed, device is, is infected. Because of the URL, because of the link where servers was spread, I've seen such framework, such, such backend in the past, and this, this framework is actually leaking statistics about the website visits. It leaks stats for uh, website visits, unique website visits, and countries where from uh, these clicks were, were coming. And based on that, we could identify that the campaign started in Japan, in Japan with over 9,000 uh, website clicks within 24 hours, and then it moved from Japan to United States. Within uh, 14 days, there were over 13,000 website clicks. Now I have prepared a video demonstration from this actual campaign. Um, in the video, you'll see uh, how, it, how it looks, what the user has to go through, what it has to download, activate, and the actual uh, phishing of uh, using actual uh, injection. So potential victim receives the link, either from social media, from Telegram, Viber, whatever. There is some video content, but first you need to download and install Adobe Flash Player. Once you inst install the Flash Player, open that, there is no request for any uh, activation of permissions whatsoever. But there is a request to activate accessibility services. For Adobe Flash Player, once this is done, malware starts to communicate with CNC, downloads the payload, downloads the injections, and enables all the necessary permissions like send, receive text messages, phone calls, make phone calls, and, and others, and now waits for user to launch one of the targeted banking apps. I will demonstrate that by launching one of the financial applications. Open the, the app, and this is the fake screen, the injection that belongs to Flash Player, and the injection actually overlaid the original application launched, launched by the user. Now we check the permissions and all the necessary permissions were activated, even though the user haven't activated them. This was done by malware misusing accessibility services. <coughs> so that was one of the first campaigns of, of Anubis. Definitely not the last, because last week a Polish CERT actually published a blog that the uh, same thing is spreading in Poland, um, same malware servers. So it's still ongoing, ha they have clients of, of their malware, even though it's um, really, really expensive. Now we're coming to conclusion. It's new, published in the end of the June. Expensive, as I said, but uh, they have already clients, the distribution, the campaigns are, are actually out there, not only in the Japan, States, and Poland, but also in other countries. <coughs> Based on the code analysis, it's um, looks like it's written from the scratch. It, not, it is not based on Anubis. Only some part were picked or got inspired by, by Anubis. You cannot have the source code on this malware as a, as a service. They have good support. They're willing to create the new features, new injections. They have social media. They are not afraid of being caught. Um, as I pointed, Cerberus downloads all the injections to, to have them locally. Compare that to Anubis that downloads them from CNC. It works much faster, much better with a laggy internet. Not easy to remove. As you, as you saw, there are only two ways, um, either going to safe mode or using ADB commands. By the way, this um, research was not published by, by ESET or by me. We were too slow while we were researching. And the guys from Thread Fabric, kudos to them, they actually published a blog post, and I advise you to check it out. It's really great. Here is a link where you can find more details, more tech details about the, the malware. So feel free to, to check it out. And that's it um, from, from my part. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask. <coughs> All right. Let's take a few questions, and let's start from the back this time, because we've started from the front up to now. Hi, 
Hello. Uh, I know there was an uh, app, Cerberus, uh, who used to find the kids or family or something like this. Is this related to that uh, app? It will, it's very used. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I haven't catched the, the question from Circus, uh, Circus app. No, no, the same uh, app, Cerberus, is uh, well known, in my opinion. App used to find the kids' uh, family remote locator. And is used by many, many years, in my knowledge. Is uh, any connection between that Cerberus and this Cerberus? The name is uh, identical. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, there shouldn't be any connection <coughs> because the one you, you mentioned, it's um, kind of for tracking, let's call it that way. Yes. Um, uh, it's totally different thing since... So maybe they are using uh, this name connection to buy, to, yeah. keep, to only, gain trust. Yeah, only the name is uh, the connection with, uh, with that. And uh, yeah, so many, many people actually thinking that they have the servers and does it mean that I have the banking Trojan? Well, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's a totally okay, different thing. Thank you. Another question? Over here. Uh, hi. Uh, just a short question. Does the Cerberus malware make use of extended functionality that comes with the rooted device? Um, uh, not for now, or at least I haven't seen misusing, um, let's say, functionality or even rooting the device um, these days. But they claim, hard to tell if it is true or not, that they, that, that they can create custom payloads, and I believe if you pay, they are willing to implement maybe even exploiting or using a, by, uh, using a routing functionalities like stealing your Facebook communication or something. Okay, and uh, just one follow-up question. Um, as far as I know, there is uh, Android malware that can survive a complete wipe. Uh, is it the case with uh, Cerberus uh, malware also? Um, no, it's not the case with the servers. Okay, thank you. Let, let's keep the trend of the short questions and take two from up front. Hello, thank you for the interesting presentation. Um, I have one question about um, custom ROMs or uh, new Android versions. Are they more secure? Um, or uh, ha has there have to be a compatibility uh, in the sense of um, an older Android version is more unsecure in these cases for an attack? Custom ROMs have their benefits. Um, hard to tell if they're more secure or not. Um, I see one benefit that uh, many people, they are into privacy. They don't want to have Google services on their smartphone. They use F-Droid market to download apps, so they don't want to send no data to Google whatsoever. That's like the one really interesting goal why to download the, the custom ROMs. Uh, if it's hard to tell if they're more secure or not because you have to go through that, you have to analyze that. Yeah, because I know a banking app and they um, permit the launch on it on a custom ROM device. But they permit on a rooted device, for example. So it's like... Um, yes, but from uh, their perspective, if um, they would at least at once include it, some bad app, a malicious app, tracking app, they would be done, in my opinion, because someone would found out and their business, let's call it that way, would be done for them. That's, I don't build the goal. Maybe someone can misuse that, like if they import or use some um, third-party apps or some, 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 something else that they include in, in their ROMs, but I don't believe this is the direct thing to you know, think about that. It's, well, there could be a malware or not. Okay. All right, last question before the break. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, if I may ask, you've mentioned that they are not afraid to be caught. Do you perceive an expiration date and how is ESET involved in this case? Do you take any next steps? Thank you. 
Well, uh, our main goal is to protect our clients. We are not working, or in this case, with uh, with the police or uh, for um, law enforcement agencies. It's it's not so easy to to point a finger and well. This one is actually responsible for creating, for spreading, distributing malware. Uh, but yeah, we are willing to, to share information, our knowledge, and cooperate. All right. Thank you very much, Lukash. This was a great presentation. Thank you.